what the fuck i feel like that was the collective expression by viewers after watching the finale for season four of the boys and you wouldn't be wrong to say that either i mean so much craziness happened now initially i was going to title this video the mindset of billy butcher or something along the lines and talk about him and his current state of mind and motivations but i think it's somewhat of a disservice to limit the video to just that considering the current state of things so in this video i'll not only be talking about butcher but i'll also do a mini analysis of a good number of the characters questions surrounding them and what it means for the series moving forward hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to like and subscribe let's cut the shit when i bring up butcher especially now everyone's mind goes to the same thing him killing vp newman and of course it's particularly shocking because it seemed as though Neiman was heading towards a redemption arc of sorts. We the audience were starting to see her slowly begin to value life more, her boundless hunger for power giving way to compassion. We even see several vulnerable and heartfelt moments between her and Huey, her and her lover and even her and her daughter. So in a sense some might feel that it was anticlimactic to kill her. I mean I've seen my fair share of people put it down to bad writing or rising for shock value. but. I'm not so sure. Now I want to take you back to this scene all the way back in season 2 when Butcher meets up with his father who's soon gonna die. In the angry exchange that ensues, he calls his father a monster and his father replies, it takes one to know one. And this becomes sort of a microcosm of what Butcher is, the monster who so desperately wants to cling to humanity. And that's who Butcher has been for the most part. He never really gets the chance to really reconcile with the events of his past. After Lenny dies, he goes straight into the military and he racks up a ton more of traumatic experiences. Somewhere in the spiral, he finds Rebecca. She becomes that hand of humanity he had been looking for with the bell to his beast. Even after losing her, Ryan served as that piece of her, that semblance of overwhelming humanity that kept him away from the darkness, the monster. But that's where things get dicey. Ryan is a kid, yes, but his actions showed something so characteristic of soups, far removed from their humanity. Volatility. There are so many soups who through temper tantrums or fits, or whatever the case, have done very gruesome things and are almost desensitized to the negative effects of their actions. I mean, it's because of that the series even starts in the first place. Now, whether it's an effect of Compound V, I don't know, but seeing that destroys the last link to humanity that Butcher had. See the thing is, as I said before, Butcher has never truly reconciled with his past or grown. He's always latched onto something, used something to cover up his pain, clung to someone to be human. But when those things are taken away, it's so easy to go back to the unresolved chaos and become tunnel visioned in that rather than doing the difficult thing and working on oneself. It's kind of funny because for how tough Butcher usually is, he's probably the weakest one because of this. That brings us to the Newman scene. Now first of all, let's get one thing out of the way. Some people think Butcher being able to do what he did to her is BS because she was deemed invincible. For one, she was never invincible, just had really high durability. I mean, even Homelander who is like the cream of the crop has gone damaged. So weaker soup was in no way impervious to said damage. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about the circumstances. Now there's something called perspective that we the audience often take for granted. We can appreciate fully Newman's genuinity and her beginning to grow. But how can the boys? I mean just earlier in the season she was going to take Huey's leverage which would have given her free reign to kill him and the boys. To take it a step further, you could say she only even called Huey because she was trapped. Now, I won't go that far, but that's a fair assumption for the characters who don't have the perspective that we do. Butcher killing her in universe is the right thing to do. She is extremely dangerous, could kill them all in a literal blink, and has a track record of switching allegiances when it favours her. I mean, she even betrayed her father. In a sense, Butcher taps into the monster, not just literally, but figuratively too, because like his father said, it takes one to know one, and he technically makes the right in-universe decision. It is a moment that op opens up a lot of questions for the future, 
what makes a monster can they be saved and what exactly is v well butcher gives us his own answers as his psychology and his actions show us that he believes that v is a drug that channels the darkness resting within people makes them volatile less than human cruel answer to the question yes but not necessarily proven wrong i mean despite vicky slowly redeeming herself she was still going to take a position of power born from the blood and dismembered bodies of innocent men and women, all who had wives of their own, kids of their own, dreams, aspirations. In a way, Butcher's actions also pose one more question. What does redemption actually mean? Difficult question, but maybe it could be answered by looking at this one guy. Now A-Train has undergone your traditional redemption arc, done horrible things, hit rock bottom and slowly done good things and turned face. But is this a redemption? When we take a holistic look at who A-Train is, his actions have always been rooted in a deep self-centeredness, living fast in a world that's far too slow for him, for his own amusement. Everything he ever did was for himself, but literally almost dying and his family makes him slow down and for once start to look at the world beyond himself. It makes him start to take pride in building relationships, setting his scores with people and actually doing good. I think that's what makes this scene with A-Train and the kids so good. Usually we just see A-Train dash in and out of areas, but for once we see him slow down and finally understands what it means to be something beyond himself. It's a great moment that almost sums this journey that we've been on with the character since season 1. But does this entail redemption? I mean, from a harsher point of view, everything A-Train has done, even the things beyond himself, have been things that put him at risk but not enough to be where he's in serious danger. He's been selfless for his family, selfless to make it up to people he hurts, but he's also ran when things have started to go south. For all the horrible things he did, people he got killed, egotistical things he said and done, do these actions he's taken in season 4 until redemption? I'm not so sure, but I, what I will say is, anyone can be a hero. Many have the powers, some have the courage, few have the desire to do what's right, even fewer have the desire to do this without compromise, regardless of the situation. That's what separates the heroes from the superheroes, and I think we will see A-Train become a real superhero in season 5. Speaking of the subject of superheroes, it's hard not to mention the seven. What I've always found interesting is how often they're called the seven, but at almost no point in the series are they actually seven in number. And I think this symbolizes something about Homelander. As the leader of the seven and someone with severe mental issues, in a weird way I think the seven are almost like extensions of himself, a family for him that he never had, irrespective of how awful he treats them. And the seven, almost never being complete, symbolizes Homelander's own deeply fragmented psyche. Over the course of the series, we have seen Homelander go through several arcs exploring his psyche, his need for affection, extreme narcissism and god complex. In this season, it's almost as though every single arc Homelander has gone through comes to a crossroads. He wants to be loved but he also wants to be feared and he also wants to be respected and also allowed to do whatever he wants. He wants to be challenged but he also wants to be dominant. And as he starts to spiral and lose everyone around him, and the Seven becomes more fragmented than ever, symbolically represented what seemed like the fragmented nature of his psyche, a character appears who helps him bring it all together and become the ultimate evil, Sister Sage. For season 5, I think we will see the most mentally stable version of Homelander. And that's not to say he won't do crazy stuff, but due to the guidance of Sister Sage, it feels like his homelander finally has something scary. Purpose. Now what has made homelander terrifying up till now is his unpredictability coupled with his strength. But he goes from scary to a force of nature when he becomes a collected force of evil. And I think he inevitably has to die in season 5 or that spells the end of human life as they know it. It makes me wonder about a character like Sage. And I think, if anything, the season finale shows her as more evil than Homelander himself. 
Remember how I said anyone can be a hero? Well, yeah. Some have the power to do it, few the desire. Traits here and there that culminate in some form of heroism. But Sister Sage is completely irredeemable. In a twisted way, even Homelander is more of a hero than Sage is. He will sometimes show a very selfish form of empathy, willingness to be loved and a conscience, not because he cares about the awful stuff he's doing, but because he cares about how it would be perceived if it's found out what he is doing. However, Sage cares about absolutely none of that. Every scene she's in, it feels as if she has an ulterior motive. She never actually saves anyone. I mean, we see even Homelander save a couple of people throughout the course of the series. But Sage, the smartest pe person in the world, the person who could cure cancer, stop wars, is content with just living in hatred and contempt for society while things go to shit. In a sense, she also manipulates Homelander. From the moment they start talking, Homelander becomes enveloped in a plot where he has no free will because Sage can see several steps ahead and actively pave the way as she sees fit. As she subtly imposes on Homelander, he himself imposes on the world around him and becomes an agent against free will. Now, Sage's actress does a great job with her facial expressions and body language. It keeps you on your toes because you don't know what her next move is. Live lost, allegiances broken, kids, women, dead, anarchy, torture, none of these things matter to her and they're nothing more than pawns for her amusement. I think that's a funny juxtaposition because Homelander himself considers people to be exactly that, pawns for his amusement and we now have this character who is in actuality far more advanced than pretty much everyone on the planet and does in fact make that sentence a reality that even Homelander himself is forced to live in. For season 5, I think as much as Homelander is the final antagonist, Sister Sage is every bit that as well and I'm curious to see where her story goes. Now since we're on the subject of final antagonists and protagonists, I think it goes without saying that we should talk about Huey and the rest of the boys. I mean, it's only right, the story itself doesn't start without Huey. I think with Huey, his character has gone through this bizarre progression and oftentimes in season 4, what felt like a regression. Many people felt like he was very often made the punchline or the butt of the joke. And while I don't necessarily agree, I don't necessarily disagree either. I mean, watching a lot of what happens in the season, for such a major character, his plot lines feel flimsy or unnoteworthy. But I think the season finale perfectly curates his somewhat mazy character arc. Coming from a guy who was dreamy eyed, always anxious, scared, to a guy who was insecure in his identity and masculinity, to a person who is willing to do things beyond himself, take risks and stand up and be a leader of men. It takes a while to get there, but we do get there. And his speech to the boys, I think, is one of my favorite moments in the show. As much as I think that Sage is the picture perfect definition of not being a hero, I think Huey is exactly what makes one. Imperfect, not always the strongest, fastest or bravest, but the one who is able to bring people together and stare evil in the face when it comes down to it. And I think that's going to make him directly opposed to Sage in season 5. How this will be handled will be interesting to see, and I'm looking forward to it. Now obviously we can't talk about Huey without talking about Annie. And while I can't exactly say I'm a huge fan of the character, I definitely think she took some steps in the right direction. Her killing herself symbolized finally ridding herself of the guilt and the weight of expectations from who she was in the past and just accepting who she is now, flaws and everything. Honestly, you can probably see that as a common theme for most of the boys, accepting themselves and who they are and become stronger as a result. M.M., Kimiko, and Frenchie follow the same pattern. At the end, we see Starlight more powerful than she's ever been. For the future, I think she's almost inevitably going to have her rematch with Soldier Boy and will become the new muscle, quote unquote, of the group after the boys get back together. I can't say I'm not excited about that, to be fair. 
I'm also excited to see what's in store for, you know, MM, Chemical and Frenchie. I really hope MM doesn't die with all the, you know, flags, like the moment with his wife and Huey finally ascending into a leadership role. But we'll have to wait and see. For Chemical and Frenchie, while I wasn't necessarily happy with how their individual character arcs were handled, I'm definitely glad to see them together. I mean, it always made a lot of sense and it almost feels like they complete each other. Kimiko for most of this season was weaker than she's usually been portrayed and Frenchie was more irrelevant than he's usually been portrayed in this season and I don't think these things are mutually exclusive of one another. So seeing what they can do together will be interesting come season 4. I think we'll really see them go ham for once. Now at this point of the video I've already talked about pretty much every character you could probably think of but I wanted to reserve this section for the grey and biggest guys who are kind of hard to really place in specific brackets. People like Soldier Boy, Ashley, The Deep, and even the Gen V characters. I think the beauty of characters like this come in the unpredictability. And I guess no one epitomizes that more than Soldier Boy. Many people were somewhat surprised about the final scene with Homelander overlooking his body. And no one's quite sure how he fits into the events in season five. I think while it's hard to suggest, he will inevitably pair up with Homelander. Now you might think, well, he doesn't necessarily like Homelander and you wouldn't be wrong, but he likes Butcher and the boys even less. Aside that, I think Soldier Boy has to go down. Symbolically, Soldier Boy is the father of superheroes, the figure who shapes how heroes in the future are. Performative, passively cruel, full of contempt with no care for anything aside themselves. As likeable as he can seem sometimes, he exactly symbolizes the scourge of heroism. And I think killing him would truly mark the death of the age of heroes and the dawn of the age where people actually care and to do real good and aren't performative mental midgets twerking for a paycheck. The dawn of real superheroes. I think it's rather obvious that Homelander and Soldier Boy won't see eye to eye on many things. I think that goes without saying with their egos. But I'm curious on the things they will see eye to eye on and how Soldier Boy's actions in Season 5 will align with Homelander's plan for Kingdom. Speaking of Kingdoms, we gotta talk about the King of the Seven Seas, The Deep. Now, The Deep has had one of the weirdest character progressions I've ever seen. There's moments where he seems likeable, funny even, and there's others where he is the most diabolical character that's ever been read. But I think there's one thing that has stayed consistent through it all. The Deep, no matter how goofy or sympathetic he seems sometimes, is a cautionary tale of how self-loathing can turn someone into a vengeful, pathetic monster. Whenever it has seemed as though he has an opportunity for redemption, he does something stupid. He stabs people in the back, tries to kiss up to people who hate him, throws away people who genuinely care about him, all due to his deep-rooted inferiority complex, and has a twisted way to take back control. With Sage's influence, he has turned into a full-blown vengeful monster, and I think it goes without saying that he's most likely going to die in this final season. And, and who better to talk about after the deep but Ashley? I think Ashley is the perfect example of a connector character doesn't necessarily do anything major but is versatile enough to fit in so many different kinds of scenes, whether it's the freaky stuff or the emotional stuff with A-Train or the scary moments with Homelander. Inari really feels like she's out of place in any scenes she's in, but she makes everyone so much better. It will be interesting to see how she is in season 5, especially with her taking Compound V. I think she very obviously will work with the boys, but but I'm not so sure how her morality will shine through to answer the series central theme at the end of the story, the question of heroism. And that's the big enigma. We can analyze these characters and break down what they did this season and past seasons and what they might do in the future. But the main thing still remains, who are these characters at their core and how will that manifest when the heat is the highest? Season 4 and the finale especially sets the tone for that. It serves as a setup chapter, a transition phase where these characters understand themselves and get ready to answer the central questions of the series. 
It makes us understand how some of the younger characters like Ryan, the Gen V characters, etc. may not be ready to answer these questions either. I mean, Ryan is just a child, but he's being forced to reconcile with the cruel reality of his whole life being a lie and him possibly being humanity's only hope by killing the only family he knows. And many people question why he's so confused. But as the fire draws closer, ready or not, everyone must choose a side. Everyone either grab a bucket to quench the fire or grab wood to make it larger. No matter the choice, few will survive. No matter the answers, what will emerge from the ashes will be the final answers. And we, the fans, will finally know who the real heroes truly are.